what will happen? And this is just an overview because it's like, it's like, Tamara, it's like your husband said, there is a well of information. You don't even know. I don't even know. We are, it is so much. Amen. And so many places you can go with the five crowns of glory. But somebody say Bema. Bema. B-E-M-A. The word judgment seat is taken from the Greek word Bema. Amen. And during the time of Christ, it will refer to a platform. Something like this. It will refer to a platform on which a ruler or a judge would decide if a person was guilty of a crime. Bema. The judgment seat of Christ. Now, I'm going to pass this around, not for y'all to read, but just to get a picture in your mind of this is going to give you an overview. It's going to show you where I'm going with these crowns. Because at the judgment seat is where we will be judged and receive our crowns. Amen? Amen. Bema. At the judgment seat, there is a seat that sits high. And it sits on a higher platform. And in the picture, you are going to see on one side of the judgment seat, there are precious stones and metals. On the other side of the judgment seat, in the picture, you will see wood, hay, and fire. Where are you going at, Candy? Let's deal with this right here. We will be judged from the books. The book of life and the book of works. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. First of all, before you can get a crown... We have to ask ourselves, is my name written in the book of life? Amen. Have you confessed Jesus? Well. Have you believed in your heart and said it out of your mouth that he is the Lord of your life? Revelation 3 and 5 said, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and I will not block his name from the book of life. Well. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Yes. Yes. So he will validate you yes. well. if your name has been written in the book of life. Uh -huh. We will also be judged from the book of works. Mm -hmm. Revelation 22 and 12, in that passage, Jesus says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Now I'm going back to the precious stones and I'm going back to the fire, the hay, and the smoke. Right. Platinum, gold, precious metals cannot be destroyed by fire. That's right. Our work Jesus. should be as pure mm. as precious metal. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says right. in 1 Corinthians 3, 12 and 15, it explains that the wood, the hay, and the stubble, what you see on the chart, if any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, or costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, either or, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. Well, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. Uh -huh. What are you saying, Candy? If you throw a precious stone in fire, uh -huh. it will not be destroyed. Well, but if it is not a precious stone, I just want to say if it's counterfeit, and you throw it in the fire, it will be consumed by the fire. So the Bible says that this is how our works will be judged and tried. Are your works precious stones? Are they pure? Are your motives pure? The reason why you do what you do, will it hold up when Jesus throws it in the fire? Or will it be consumed? 
Like, hey. Y'all ain't saying that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Your works should either be good and pure as precious metal or they're either counterfeit, fake, or worthless because when they're thrown in the fire, they will be consumed. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. So the Bible says that if your work is burned up, though your name is written in the book of life, you will still suffer loss. You will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. 1 Corinthians 3, that's 12 through 15. So that puts us, that should put everyone in here in a place to where we're asking ourselves, are my motives pure? Are they as precious metal? When I stand before God and he tries them, will they burn up or will they withstand the fire? But in light of Paul's many references to the athletic competition, this is what's going on. This is where Paul got the contest from. Because he applied it to Greek sports. The Greeks, they would have these sports. And the winner of the contest was honored at the Bema seat. The Bema. Which is where we will stand to be judged. So the amazing thing is, even if you won the contest in these Greek sports, you had to stand before the Bema or the judgment seat to see if you followed the rules. He was crowned at the Bema seat, whoever the winner was, with a laurel wreath. This is a wreath like garland or leaves. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, Paul is saying, anyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. This is the garland of leaves. But this is the incorruptible crown or the victor's crown. Verse 26, it says, Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. When we beat the air, that's pointless. But I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. Temperate in all things. This is how we obtain the incorruptible crown. Amen. Paul said, but if he did not discipline his body and bring it into subjection, yes. when he preached to others, he would be what? Disqualified. Amen. Amen. So we would all be judged according to our words. What are you dealing with today? That you have not quite mastered. Lord, Or not. You have not become quite disciplined in. What is it today? Only you know. This is a self. This is between you and God today. We don't want to fight. We say, oh, I'm living for Jesus. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just running the race. I just want to get my seat in glory. But we shouldn't be running with uncertainty. It's like beating the air. It's vain. But when we become temperate in all things, when we're not coming in here getting mad with the preacher and wanting to get him peace of our mind because we don't like what's going on. Come on, right. Come on, right. Or we haven't quite been as faithful as we think as we should be in the body of Christ. That's doing things like beating the air. But when you become disciplined and bring it into subjection, subjection, your body into subjection, this is when you obtain the incorruptible crown. I'm going back to what Paul said. Paul said, if the winner of the contest, even though he won, he won the contest, but did he follow the rules? So you understand what he's trying to say? We can look like we win. 
You honor me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. We can look like we're winning. And like we're just on the battlefield for the Lord. But only he knows. And you know too. Hey, That's right. If we have followed the rules. If we have kept his commandments. Yes. And if we keep his commandments. No matter what. We will receive the crown of life. Yes. Now this crown of life deal with those who are willing to lay down our lives. When you lay down your life, you get just the opposite life. Mm -hmm. When a man and a woman come together, well. what happens? When they come together and they consummate their marriage, what happens? Life. Amen. Part of the problem is some of us know Jesus, but we have not consummated the relationship. We are not intimate or in tune with him, and that's why we're walking around, but we really don't have life. We're dead. Because it's not him who's living on the inside of us. So the kind of life deal with those who are willing to lay down our lives, and we get Zoe life. But Revelation 2 and 10 tells us, this is for some of us in here, do not fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Well, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. That's a whole nother message to get into that. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So, I got to come down because I got to talk to a few of you in here about that. To let you know what happens when life feels like death. You know you walking with God. You know you hear God. You know God is blessing you. You know he's favored you. You know his hand is on you. All right, all right. Yes. But it don't feel like you working for no crown of life. You feel like you wearing a crown of thorns. And what did the crown of thorns represent when Jesus bore the crown of thorns? He took on our frustrations, our struggles, our depression, our oppression, and he bled from his head to give us a point of deliverance from everything that he was plagued with. So what is it today that's making your mind bleed? Jesus. It feels like death. The crown of thorns feels like death. But be encouraged because he is really giving us the crown of life. All right, now. Paul on the way to Nero's chopping block. He was not worried about what was about to happen to him. Do you know why? Because he said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So even though they might kill this body, just because in him I move, in him I live, and in him I breathe, they don't really kill me. I live even the more. And I will receive my crown of life. Hallelujah. So no matter what it feels like, you feel like those thorns on your head, they're just going to take you out. But I'm telling you, it didn't take Jesus out. Come on, And it's not going to take us out. As a matter of fact, the word declares, and he said that greater work shall we do. The crown of life. Nobody can take nothing away from you. Nothing. Which brings me to the crown of glory. Or the elder's crown. Wow. In 1 Peter 5. 2 through 4. Peter addresses the elders. And tell them, feed the flock of God which is among you. Yes. Right. 
taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, not for your money and things and material things, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. We were just talking about that. <laughs> Neither as being lords over the people, but leading ah, them. Ah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm. Being examples to the flock. Thank you. And if you do that, when the chief shepherd shall appear, yes. my God, my God. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that does not fade away. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. So that's why in the midst of what it might feel like, the frustration, on, being vexed in your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just know, when man... Uh, will not see and will not give God glory for what's in you. Just know you're going to get your glory. Man might blot it out, but the word declares that it will not. It says it fadeth not away. They know what you're doing. But they still try to say, she ain't doing nothing. my God. They know what you're doing is of God. But they do what the word said. They try to blot it out and make it fade away like it's nothing. But they are as precious metals. Your works are as precious metals. And when God tries them and throws them in that fire, they will not come out consumed. So no longer be vexed in your spirit. But take on your crown of glory now. Amen. See yourself in it. Jesus. And God will reveal the truth too about some situation that you're praying about because you don't know exactly who it is or what it is. But he will reveal the truth. Amen. The truth of the matter. Thank you, Jesus. Which brings us to the crown of righteousness. For those who love his appearing. Now, I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all. But we got to be some strange people. Yeah. <laughs> to not even care if Jesus Christ comes back today or tomorrow. We saying, come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. We got to be strange, don't we? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But Paul said that we would glory at his appearance. Yes. For those who love his appearance, 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8, Paul knew it was time to meet his maker. And he was ready. So he addresses Timothy and he says, Timothy, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. Come on. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew no matter what they said and did, even though he was hindered and tried and thrown, you know, just left for dead and beaten and all that, he said, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. And finally, that is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. Because I walked in the things of God and in the ways of God when they didn't expect me to. When they kept trying me and they kept making it hard for me. I walked in what God wanted me to walk in. And Paul says because of that, he will receive his crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, would give to me on that day. But not to me only. But to all those who love his appearing. Do you love his appearing? Sure. I don't know about y'all Y'all might call me crazy But if he came back tomorrow I would be Hallelujah, thank you Jesus Come get me Amen. We gotta be ready Ready Not saying Lord I didn't get a chance to do this yet And I wanted to do that Then those works are gonna be thrown in the fire And be consumed because they're not pure Hallelujah. If it's what you 
want to do. It's about me. I'm not done yet. No, 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 no. It's about what he has for us to do. So are we walking in truth and righteousness? I don't know about you, but I can walk in truth and righteousness because I know that my Redeemer lives and no matter what happens, come what will, come what may, whether they tell us we got to take the mark next month or whatever, even if they have to kill this body, because my Redeemer lives, I live. Come on, y'all, to give God praise for that. Lord. That's why we need to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And when we do that, we will receive a crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. First Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20, Paul says, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. You are our glory and joy. Do you believe that? Lord, you are our glory and our joy. And if we keep this joy in the midst of being hindered, in the midst of being persecuted, and whatever circumstance we may be in, we will receive the soul winner's crown. Saying steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm striving for my crown. That I may receive my reward from Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. And I can just see through my eye of faith. The Bible says in Revelation that when he comes back and he's coming back swiftly. The Bible said he came back and his eyes were as a blazing fire. And he said on his head were many crowns. And I'm just guessing there were many crowns because he did have the soul winner's crown. Because he died for me and you and he's still bringing souls in in his name. I can see through my eye of faith when he received the martyr's crown or the crown of life because he laid his life down. I can see through my eye of faith that he had the incorruptible crown because he went down to hell and defeated death and took the keys to hell and got the keys to the kingdom and said, what did he say? Come on now. All power. He got up with all power in his hand. He said, oh death, where is thy sin? Is what he said. I could just see through my eye of faith that that was another crown because it said he had many crowns. And I could see through my eye of faith that he had that crown of glory because he led. He was the chief elder. He hadn't left yet, but he led the disciples. He taught the disciples. He trained the disciples. I could just see through my eye of faith that he wore every crown because he was tempted with everything as we were. But defeated them all. He won that in incorruptible crown because he was a man that knew no sin. And he had mastered everything that God wanted him to master. And on that great judgment day, where are you in receiving your crown? This is a self thing. This is a personal thing. Where are you? Are you winning souls in the kingdom? Or are you just going to church and going home and saying, ooh, that was a good service? Yeah. Oh, my God. Good question. Are we crucifying our flesh daily? Killing ourselves that we might have life. Eternal, so in life. That's what it's all about. What are we doing? Where are we at in the body of Christ? We have a mission. Jesus. Every joint supplies. Jesus. And if my joint is teaching and yours is preaching and, and prophesying and, and apostleship, every joint supplies. Right. Even if you're not in the fivefold, we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. So we should all be out 
discipling and bringing people into the kingdom. He keeps invading. The enemy keeps invading our houses, invading our jobs, invading our minds. When are we going to go out and invade his territory and take back what he took from us? You got it. When are we going to do that? It's a time when God is stirring something in the spirit. Something is stirring. And right now, everything is calm. But in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, Jesus. there's about to be some chaos. Jesus. Oh, you're right. Don't be fooled thinking we have time. Jesus. We're in a Kairos moment right now. All right. Well, we don't have to beg God for anything. I know you. I know you. Because he told me one morning. All my promises are already written. My answer is yes. <laughs> Lord, heal my body. No, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes. We got to stand on God's word. And we got to believe no matter what it feels like. We have to separate the soulish realm from the spirit realm. Our feelings, our soul, things like that. Our soul is the emotional side of us. The spirit of God that lives in us is the true us. The spirit of God, his spirit is perfect in us. We're not perfect. But his spirit is perfect in us. So when we learn to sever the soul and the spirit and lean more to what his spirit on the inside of us is saying versus our soulish realm or what it might feel like, then we will begin to walk in victory and receive the incorruptible crown. So we have to crucify our flesh daily. I count myself. As sheep to the slaughter. Is that what it said? Yeah. Is that what Paul said? Yeah. I know I'm going out amongst wolves. Yeah. But I'm in this world and I'm not of this world. So I'm just waiting for the time when he cracks that sky. Hey, my God. And he begins to rapture us up. Where will you be when he calls our name? All right now. Today he gave me a lot of questions to ask Instead of just preaching, preaching, preaching to you But questions for you To answer For yourself And I'm asking myself Am I ready? What am I doing to obtain my crown? All my works is precious stones? Are they really? Jesus or am I going to get discouraged and cave in and quit because I'm going with my feelings rather than who he made me to be? His spirit being big on the inside.